Just to recap, a typical private equity fund is 10 years in length. And by definition, the companies are private. So the private equity fund needs to find attractive companies to buy. It needs to ensure these companies are for sale. It needs to conduct detailed due diligence on the company and needs to negotiate a deal to buy the company. This is very different from a public equity fund. So that is why a typical private equity fund is a closed ended fund that is 10 years in length. There are other types of vehicles such as open-ended liquid private equity funds, which we talked about in our video titled liquid private equity, but the most common vehicle is the closed ended private equity fund because the underlying companies are private by definition. So if you're going to invest in private equity funds, you need to understand the terminology that's associated with a typical private equity fund. So let's go one by one through seven main terms that you need to understand. Committed capital, capital call, subscription line of credit, management fees, performance fees, waterfall, and clawback. Are you ready? So let's get started with committed capital. Committed capital is when an investor commits to a private equity fund. When this happens, it gives a portion of the money to the private equity fund up front, but the rest of the capital is still uncalled. After all, the private equity fund needs to find attractive companies to buy, needs to ensure these companies are for sale, needs to conduct detailed due diligence on the company, and needs to negotiate a deal to buy the company. And so, as the private equity fund eventually finds and buys these companies, that uncalled capital needs to be called. And how is it called? Well, you guessed it, through a capital call. So when the money needs to be called by the private equity fund, we say that the private equity fund makes a capital call so that the capital can be invested. In other words, the private equity fund calls capital from the investor and the investor invests the capital. We refer to the capital that is invested in the fund as invested capital. Now, what happens if the private equity fund wants to call the capital from the investors, but that money is not available? Well, the private equity fund would use a subscription line of credit. A subscription line of credit will allow the private equity fund to borrow money from the bank to allow investors more time to give their capital to the private equity fund. Now, this is a quick description of a subscription line of credit, but there's a lot more to it. So if you're interested, please check out our video titled Subscription Lines of Credit to learn more. Now, you're probably wondering, how does a private equity firm make money? Well, they make money through two main sets of fees, management fees and performance fees. So let's start with management fees. Management fees are meant to cover day-to-day -day expenses, such as rent and salaries. Management fees are calculated as a percentage. Traditionally, it was 2%, but now that funds are getting a lot bigger, it could be less than 2%. Now, most of the time, management fees are a percentage of committed capital, not invested capital. Now there exist funds that calculate management fees as a percentage of invested capital, but most private equity funds calculate management fees as a percentage of committed capital. The second type of fees are performance fees. Performance fees, also known as carried interest or the carry, are used to compensate the private equity firm for performing well. Now usually the performance fees are 20% of the upside. And there's usually a hurdle rate and a catch-up clause involved. So let's say the hurdle rate was 8% and there was a catch-up clause. In this case, the first 8% would go to the investor, the next 2% would go to the private equity firm, and after 10%, the return would be split, 80% to the investor, and 20% to the private equity firm. So when does the private equity firm actually collect the performance fees? Is it after each deal? Or does the investor have to receive all of their committed capital back plus the hurdle rate before the private equity firm can collect performance fees? 
Well, it depends on the type of waterfall in the agreement. A waterfall focuses on the timing of when performance fees are collected by the private equity firm. In a deal-by-deal -deal waterfall, also known as an American waterfall, performance fees are collected on a deal-by-deal -deal basis. In other words, the private equity fund sells a company and earns a return more than the hurdle rate, the private equity firm can collect performance fees even if the investor has not received all of their committed capital back. In a whole of fund waterfall, also known as a European waterfall, performance fees are not collected until all of the investor's committed capital has been returned and the hurdle rate has been met. As you can imagine, a deal by deal waterfall is more advantageous for the private equity firm and a whole of fund waterfall is more advantageous for the investor. Now, in the case of a deal by deal waterfall, there is a chance that the private equity firm collects performance fees from early successful deals, even if later deals in the fund lose money. Well, in this case, the private equity firm would have to give some or all of the collected performance fees back to the investor. And this is done through a clawback. A clawback occurs when the private equity firm has collected more performance fees than the firm deserves. In this case, the investors can claw back the excess performance fees. Now, here's a final thought. Investors, before investing in a private equity fund, you need to understand the details of the limited partnership agreement between you, the investor, the limited partner, and the private equity firm, the general partner. In this video, we reviewed some of the basic terms in private equity. But if you really wanna learn the details of private equity, please check out the private equity certificate that we built in collaboration with the CFA Society Toronto that has a certificate exam with 100 multiple choice questions. That certificate comes with tons of preparatory materials to ensure that you understand everything you need to know about private equity. It comes with over 70 videos that are in a similar format to this video you're watching right now. Over 60 real world problems and solutions and more than 200 practice multiple choice questions. The preparatory materials also include Mink Learning's Ultimate Private Equity Guide, which is an over 250 page private equity guide that includes more than 40 real world private equity case studies, many of which are additional case studies that are not covered in the videos. More than 70 proprietary tips that are called Mink Tips. And throughout the guide, there are references to more than 150 companies involved in private equity. To take your private equity knowledge to the next level, please see the link in the description below to sign up for the private equity certificate.